We're off on a whole new adventure, and it's very exciting. We sort of built this family that just kept growing and growing and growing, and it sort of culminated and grew into friends. A teenager came up to me and said, you've got to tell me what happens with Ross and Rachel. And I said, I, I don't even tell my children. It's the beginning of a new season for the hit television show, Friends. In a little more than two weeks, the first episode will be filmed in front of a live audience. Over the next nine months, 23 more will come together in rapid fashion. A TV show is like a freight train. Once it leaves the station, it gathers an unstoppable and relentless momentum. First on board for Friends are the writers. In the first episode, maybe the first line you're playing catch up, but... You know, the, the second one, when you, you know, I just got to get it off my chest. Not to me! You know, I think you're definitely it's there. Easy. This is the oh, yeah. Rachel's hotel room. Remember in the cliffhanger last season how they uh, Her and Ross got, got kind of drunk in here? Kind of. They were blasting. <laughs> oh. Wow. Hello. 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 <laughs> Cliffhanger at the end of last season was sort of a double cliffhanger. This is it. Are you sure you want to do this? Monica and Chandler plan to get married. Just before they walk into the chapel and are able to go through with it, Ross and Rachel drunkenly stumble out of the chapel, having just gotten married. Whoa! Oh my god. We, A, don't know what Monica and Chandler are going to do, and B, we have no idea what the hell Ross and Rachel were thinking and how, what they're going to do to get out of it, or if they even want to get out of it. Adam Chase is an executive producer and one of the head writers on Friends. He's written the first two drafts of the premiere episode, and now the way it works is the script gets thrown to the table, where the entire writing staff gives input and makes suggestions. It's not about that. What it's not about, about is he, um, he really just does not want another divorce. And I really think that confuses things. You can fix it by, in that scene that he says, we'll get an annulment. And he goes, oh, and she's blah, blah, blah. And he says, well, it's because it's still a failed marriage. And she goes, but it's like it never happened. And she sells it, and he goes, oh, OK. He kind of reluctantly gets on board. Then you'll at least understand it when he does it. And it's not just odd. This episode, the first episode of the season, we've got the wedding chapel, Rachel's hotel room, the coffee shop at Caesars with the buffet line. We have an airplane. We have Monica and Rachel's apartment. John Schaffner, the art director, so, runs down the list of sets space. in the season premiere for supervising producer Todd Stevens. But it's all guesswork because the script is still a work in progress. Like if, if you leave really upbeat, bye Rachel, bye, bye, see ya. Okay, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. Yeah. I didn't do it. I think that's less funny. Oh. I think it's funnier. <laughs> Not the way you it's did opposite. it. It's opposite. There. No, I think it's, I think it's funnier when it's got a kind of when it's I got a new line build up. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, the acting. I love. It was vivid. It was like, wow, where'd Sean go? But as friends heads into another season, there's a lot riding on just how funny they can make it. <laughs> it's always one of the top ten rated shows on television and NBC still relies upon Friends to kick off its crucial Thursday night block of must-see TV programming. Must-see TV Thursday in two weeks. As far as our Thursday night goes, it, launched, it sets off our Thursday night, and without it, we would have a very difficult time keeping the numbers as high as they are. It becomes an identity. You know, when people drive by the Warner Brothers lot and they see the Friends cast photo on that wall, you know, for the studio, it is, we are the studio that produces Friends. You know, the financial rewards are should be obvious. Friends averages over 24 million viewers every week. This makes it one of the crown jewels for Warner Brothers Studios. They produce the show and sell it to NBC. I actually think that's all you need. I think Phoebe, can, really? after Phoebe's joke, she can walk out and they can all walk out after her. At either end of the writer's table sit Marta Kaufman yeah. and David Crane.
They created Friends, and together with their partner, Kevin Bright, Big first show, big first show. They oversee one of television's most successful production companies. Besides Friends, Bright Kaufman Crane has two other shows in primetime. Bright Kaufman Crane. Sweetie. Jesse and Veronica's Closet. Meet your new boss. Hello. <laughs> there you go. We met in college. And so we, we've been writing for over 20 years together. And we did musicals in New York. We wrote musicals. In our late 20s, we went, wow, we're not making any money. And so... I had a baby at this point. We just started coming up with ideas for shows and trying to sell them. And one of the first ones we sold was Dream On. Dream On's success on cable opened the door to the networks. NBC put Friends on the air in 1994, and Bright Kaufman Crane was off and running. Kai Blomberg, Quent Schierenberg, and Greg Bruza make up the set dressing department for Friends. Their first order of business is to dress one of the three main sets on Friends, Monica and Rachel's apartment. This means putting back every piece of furniture, decorative art, books, and the countless other items that turn a soundstage into a TV home. This is Marjorie, a prop master. Well, we like to call her a prop, prop diva. Divas. We're going to stay back, coming into the prop room, Let's see what it looks like after last season's uh, clothes. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Props are what I do. Props are anything an actor touches. Anything that they need to touch and handle is right. something that props handles. You know, on other kinds of shows, it would be guns, it would be... You know. A clipboard, a briefcase, a cup of in this case, a cup of coffee, the food lot. they're eating, the yeah. magazine they're reading, anything the actor touches, she has to find and make it just perfect for that character and for the scene. Hey! <gasps> hey oh! Oh, Monica! It's so beautiful! I know! <gasps> One episode, Monica had a dollhouse given to her by her great aunt. It was a Victorian beautiful dollhouse, and, she, and Phoebe wanted to play with it, but Phoebe wanted to bring all sorts of absurd things into it, and Monica refused. So check it out. Ha ha. <laughs> What's this? That's a dog. Every house should have a dog. Not one that can pee on the roof. <laughs> So Phoebe decided to make her own dollhouse out of shoeboxes. Ah, look, look! <gasps> so that was a real fun one. Of course, we had to make six. So not only did we make in like three dollhouse. days. Yeah, yeah. It was a short day. We had the licorice room. You can eat all the furniture. <laughs> Does anyone want to join me in the aroma room? Oh, right. I would. But we had to make six because, of course, they had to burn. It was like the piece de resistance of this department at one time. All the pieces of Friends' signature set, Central Perk, have been found, and work continues on reassembling the world's most famous make-believe coffee house. Great. Good job, Betty, Tommy, Reuben, Danny, Larry, Johnny. You guys did a nice job. Adult Model Building 101. Let's go to lunch! Once Central Perk is back up, Greg, Kai, and Quint begin to choreograph the redressing of the set. Just make it straight through. I can see it. To redress these sets, we have all these continuity photos to help us along the road. We have, like in this plexi counter, we get all this coffee and tea product and you name it, that we change every third, fourth episode, you know, to make it realistic because you can't have a stagnant coffee shop where everything stays the same. A new draft of episode one has come down from the writer's room. Some scenes have been written out and replaced with new ones. This triggers a hasty conference held on a prop a Caesar's Palace blackjack table. 
So we can leave the wedding chapel as is. Right. I just need to know what to light. Can we work on this to light now? It's not going to move. Don't right? ask they me. can, but it's a gamble. Right here. Can I take it up a moment? Thank you. And a Watch your eyes. Double on. Raise it up. It's kind of a half double on the bottom? Okay. Yes, sir. I'm the gaffer. And I work uh, in concert with the director of photography to get the look of the show. As you can see in the apartment here, we have a, a week's rig to get everything prepped and ready for the actors and everyone to come in. The basic goal for the gaffers is to make sure each part of the set is uniformly lit. Once the cameras are rolling, there's no time to stop and light for each and every shot. Josh, you going to go with the teaser yeah. on this pub? Yeah. I was thinking about bottoming it, too. I did Joey and Chandler's. If you eliminated Joey and Chandler's, it really wouldn't matter, because what I'm going to okay. do is pull out the two walls and then reset the back wall and just get it dressed so you can do both. There's still so much of the show to go after this. How many scenes are in here? One. One elevator walk to the table. So and then we have, how many scenes do we have in here? More than one. One giant scene. The difficulty is that when they originally you know, left, walked out of last season. Everyone went on their vacation thinking, oh, we'll come back and we'll have to finish up all this stuff at Caesar's Palace. We won't be back in New York. We'll leave a lot of the sets up. So we left everything up. As they, you know, they started sitting around the table and thinking about it, they got, well, we only have a little bit home. of story. Get us back home. <laughs> there. There just isn't enough material. They're done. After tonight, we basically run out of stuff. To, the crew okay. runs out of stuff. To do. You don't need to While the writers work the script and the art department tries to stay one step ahead, the boys from set dressing put a few more props in place and unwind with their favorite pastime. <laughs> yes! <laughs> okay, here we go, guys. Welcome back. Welcome. It's the first production meeting of the season. So here we go. We have Kevin directing this week. Yeah. Okay. Some people needed a little more vacation. All right. As an executive producer of Friends, the last thing Kevin Bright seems to need is more responsibility. But he will personally direct at least 10 episodes this coming season. The enjoyment I get out of, you know, spending a week on that stage with that cast is uh, really what makes it worthwhile with everything else we've got going on. Okay, we're in the wedding chapel. It's continuous from the last episode. The production meeting is the first time all the department heads gather to prepare for episode one. We're on six. With show night only four days away, they flip through the pages of the latest script, discussing everything from wardrobe to props to makeup. We're on 10. Ross and Rachel come over to the table. They no longer have ink on their faces. They have no longer have ink on their faces, except there's a, should, should you see a whole letter? Because he says you have writing on your head, so should there be an S that's not covered We're from the Ross? Off. The no. idea is they've washed it so much that it's faded, and now the makeup, makeup does cover. work. So that when he does do the makeup bit, it should cover it up. Okay. Oh, it depends on how I want to play it. If I want the production meeting the finished, Kevin Bright takes a quick tour of the sets you know, to make sure everything is in place for the next day's rehearsal. Clothes on them. It should come from around this corner and just basically pull up right here. It just makes it feel really... Yeah. It's a fire thing that I have to It's the first time you've ever worked in five years. <laughs> this is hey, no, I've, I've never seen you down here on the stage ever before. This is great. Matthew yeah. Perry. Nice to meet you, man. Hey, how are you? Great. Almost didn't recognize you. Who is this guy? <laughs> After his summer hiatus, cast member Matthew Perry gets reacquainted with his executive producer. <laughs> That's it. It's all happening. all in trouble. Stay on me, man. I'm the actor. Yeah, man. This is, this is, this is. Let him walk out. Page one. Let's make that cut. After Chandler's, oh my God, is everybody getting married? The writer's room is the usual hub of activity as they continue to tighten the script. Shoot anywhere. Rehearsal begins as Kevin, cast, and crew pick up the story from the previous season's cliffhanger. So everybody here saw the last episode of last season, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> here we go. And action. Hello, Mrs. Ross. Oh, hello, Mr. Rachel. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is everybody getting married? The first couple of days of rehearsal, it's really about the excitement of 
here's a new script. <laughs> sort of has that atmosphere like a bunch of kids in a playground huddling together and creating their own game. It's just, what if we do this? What if we do this? Where should we start? <laughs> we could go back. Yes. But? Yes. <laughs> well, um, last night we let the, the dice decide. Um, uh, maybe we should let it up, leave it up to fate again. Well, um, uh, I love you. <laughs> uh, okay, let me say that again. Okay. Uh, well, um, last night we let the, the, the dice decide, and maybe we should leave it up to fate again. I love you. <laughs> the writers watch, scripts in hand, hanging on every line of dialogue. If a joke isn't funny, they're looking at a long night of rewriting. There are 12 of us because the way life works is you're not always on. Today, I might not be at my funniest for whatever reason. We know that there are like 150 people waiting for the new version of this. It has to be at the stage at 8.30 in the morning. Everybody thinks they can do it. Um, and I'm sure there are many people who can. Um, I think, A, it's not as easy as it looks. Otherwise, we wouldn't be there till 5, 6, and 7 in the morning with 14 incredibly smart people. It's not hard to be funny. It's hard to be funny in a way that will translate to the show and that you can air on television. <laughs> you don't have time to worry about not being funny. You just have to be. Everything's great. So everything stays the same. Now you go unpack, and because uh, your clothes have been there for three days, it's driving me crazy. And I'm going to sit down here and try to lower the volume of my voice. <laughs> <laughs> television is a writer's medium. They get paid very handsomely to be smart and funny. The hours are long, and the schedule insane. Some shows are out early. I mean, it just depends on the, 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 the nature of the beast. But if it's a show like Friends, where you're here until 4 and 5 and 6, once you're pretty deep into the season and it's gotten harder, yeah, that's tougher. Is that writing on your forehead? Oh, uh, thanks. So you got married and became a woman all in one night? <laughs> <laughs> the compact thing gets in the way now. Especially now. Yeah. That so in the middle of something else that's yeah. so much more interesting, and suddenly we, we take a step out. Night. We talked about that last night, but we can't just abandon the fact that they have magic marker on their face. A continuity problem has come up. The first episode picks up from last year, with Ross and Rachel waking up in their Las Vegas hotel bed with writing on their faces. Do you, do you, have, a, do you have any clothes on? Yes. Really? No. Uh, the debate is over whether or not the writing should still be visible when they come down for breakfast. The question is, do they not have writing on their face? If they woke up in the morning. No, but we've we already said it's all indelible. 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 But then, indelible. But then how did they cover it up? And because it's 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 even, even it's stuff when you write something yeah. on yourself, the next day it's less. That's what I was saying. If in this scene it's there, but it's it's fainter, and then the next time we see them, it's a day later, they're in the coffee house, and it's gone by then. I would have it be very faint in the morning, and you don't see it here. This is so amazing. <laughs> I really thought I would have to you know, talk you into this more. <laughs> okay, now I'm scared, because I don't actually think you see it. <laughs> Rehearsal is an important time for script supervisor Jolie Barnett. Uh, we go through all the dialogue and just see what we need to do to change stuff. We were long today, I timed the show, and so they'll probably go in and trim. Since yesterday the script grew a lot. It was like, we were like nine minutes long today. It's midnight, and after a long rewrite session, head writers Adam Chase and Greg Malins take a few more minutes to proofread yet another pass on the script. Tonight's rewrite was less about solving story problems than it was about finding like seven pages to cut, which is really hard in a script that works. Today would be the first day of camera blocking for the 1999-2000 season. It's the first day cameras are on the set. Hey, hey buddy, buddy, let's go, man. Sitcoms are shot using multiple cameras on every scene. Friends uses four, and sometimes five, to film all the action. Let them come over to you. Camera blocking is the process of, at any given part of the scene, where are the cameras and what are they photographing? They're going to be standing here, holding hands, the elevator door is going to open up and you want to see between them the priest that's going to be standing here. In order to keep the camera dollies from crashing into each other, the camera assistant places numbered tape marks on the stage floor, which tell them where they need to be in every scene. Stand-ins are used to mark where the actors will be. I think it's funnier from here. Me too. I, I like that it just happens, yeah. that it's all but in one shot. But I also think they need to let go hands. And you don't have to they cut to do yeah. this. Uh, when they see the priest when they look at each other. Okay. I think that's part, okay. of, that's part of the... Uh... I got you. And that's it. So we'll clean it up tomorrow. I think we're in okay shape. 
show day is finally here. Four hours before filming begins, 500 fans line up for 300 seats to watch the premiere episode of Friends come together. My favorite character is Chandler. I just want to go see Rachel. <laughs> Christine for Miriam, please send me eight more ticket holders with the six production right away. Here we go. We're going in. You guys play the most important part, the live studio audience. We're going to record the rest of your life as any horror all over the world. The night of filming on this show is not just a, a filming, it's almost like club friends. It's really hard to describe. There is a, certainly a pinch of Beatlemania in it. The audience raises to their feet. They've been waiting for an hour and there is definitely excitement and energy at, like a concert. If everything goes smoothly, it will take about five hours to film the 22 minutes of actual showtime. The cameras are rolled into position and the first scene gets underway. Scene Apple, take one. Four cameras. Marker. Each scene is shot a number of times, with a surprising amount of rewriting going on between takes. I can't believe Ross and Rachel got married. I can't either. <laughs> I can't believe Ross and Rachel got married. I know. I didn't even know they were dating again. I don't think there's much dating as they are drunk. Uh, I don't think they're dating as much dating as they are unbelievably drunk or very, very drunk. Something fun and emphatic there. I don't think they're as much dating as they are completely filled with alcohol. The first take of the wedding chapel scene fell a little flat on David Crane's ears. While the cameras reset, they quickly try and come up with something funnier. Finally, they go to Matthew Perry. You know what? Why don't we ask him and that because it's so like Matthew. Okay. I don't think there's much dating as they are acting on a scene from Barfly. All right. Did they have so much dating as they are completely filled with alcohol? I don't think there's much dating as they are two bottles of vodka walking around in human form. <laughs> yes. Seven minutes yeah. later, they're ready for take two. I can't believe Ross and Rachel got married. I know. I didn't even know they were dating again. Well, I don't think there's much dating as they are two bottles of vodka walking around in human form. <laughs> <laughs> the changing as we go is a really good testament to just how smart the executive producers are. And I've done a lot of shows in the past where I had kind of a tyrannical, don't touch the words, and it's just not the way to do a show. And if a joke doesn't work, you just see this whole group of smart people just get in this huddle and then they come out and they tell you a joke. The audience is going to tell you what's working and what's not working. Things that crack us up, they just sometimes don't get. Sometimes they get the setup and don't, you don't even need the joke. I'm going to jump back in and they roll the dice, then I go back into the two. After they roll the dice, take a beat and then go back into the two. The key in half hour comedy, while there are a lot of things a director wants to bring to it, there's a very short window of time to get everything done. And so, yes, yeah, speed is uh, a necessity. Speed and a very good pair of shoes. Action! <laughs> let's get married, I guess. Um, on your let's just get married, I guess? Can it be even more forced enthusiasm? Oh, you don't think it's funny to play that kind of bum? Switch? Let's, let's just get married, I guess. It didn't feel funny. Okay. I think the well, let's get married, I guess. <laughs> The call to move on is the battle cry to prepare for the next scene. As the cameras make their way across the stage, the writers continue to pitch new jokes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Anything else on 10? One little pitch on 9? Yes. Uh, it's a buffet. It's in trouble. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's, 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 it's in trouble. Oh, it's in trouble. Like, I'm going to go eat it all. How about, here's where I win all my money back. <laughs> I like that. Great. 
after it's a buffet, Joey says, here's where I win all my money back. Kevin, there's a lot of changes coming. Good shit. You guys ready? Where is the waitress? I'm starving. It's a buffet, man. <laughs> here's where I win all my money back. The completion of this scene triggers a frenetic bout of activity. The set dressers and grips tear out the Caesar's Palace buffet to make room for the next scene. A set change can take as long as 20 minutes, but with warm-up comedian Jim Bentley to entertain them, the audience has no time to be bored. There's no question about it. There is nothing like a friend's audience. They are just complete maniacs when it comes to friends. A sitcom is as close to live theater as television gets. The actors play to the audience, and their feedback is crucial. Oh, yeah. We play off the audience all the time. Yeah, very important. It's kind of like a test to see if the material works, if the jokes work, if the story tracks, if the audience is with, you know, if we've given them enough exposition along with jokes. We've done like 120 of these things, but our energy just elevates every time there's an audience. I still get nervous before shows, and I think it's, it's just generally, you know, it's like putting on a one-act play every week. Marker. This is insane. Well, that's the big deal, you know? It's not like it's a real marriage. What? Oh, no, when you get married in Vegas, you're only married in Vegas. Oh, <laughs> what are you talking about? If you get married in Vegas, you're married everywhere. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah, well. <laughs> is it clear at the end that she's talking about herself and the not oh about Ross and Rachel? The Oh My God isn't bigger. Is the Oh My God has to be bigger, yeah, okay. I and also, um... they laughed because they got it. I laughed so though. hard on Oh My God. But they didn't laugh at that well. Wait, what if the... What if after Oh My God, laugh, 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 I have to make We're some calls? We're just not very bright, and smart people will get it. Marta and David run a very democratic show. There's a question as to whether or not the implications of a joke from Phoebe are understood. So what do they do? They put it to a vote. If you want to be sure where you ask them. You can ask them. Ask All right. Who what did not everybody? get it? Who did not get the fact that, we, that, uh, that Phoebe was married in Vegas? From that joke. She that says, oh, my God. That at some time in the past she was Sometime married in, in Las Vegas. You guys got yes. They're All got it? They got it. Great. Got it. Beautiful. I'm not lying. Oh. Marker. Ross, the bottom line here, we cannot stay married. See, I don't know if that's true. Oh, you yeah, better it is. <laughs> <laughs> OK. What we have here is a difference of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and when that happens in a marriage. Ross, that's into a marriage. <laughs> now, Ross, listen, if you do not get this annulment, I will. Writer people? Is there anything funnier than stop saying the word marriage? We've got a... We're in a drunken mistake. <laughs> it's funny, huh? We're talking about the line, instead of stop saying the word marriage, which actually isn't funny. Because when that happens, it's a crazy drunken mistake. This is not marriage. It's the world's worst hangover. This is the world's worst hangover. Yeah, that's great. Here we go. And rolling. And when that happens in a marriage... No, Ross, come on! This is not a, this is not a marriage! This is the world's worst hangover! <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mozart. It just comes to you. Uh, I'm not responsible to get... But, but actually, actually, somebody it's else... It's just like Mozart. But actually, somebody else had, had the area. So it usually... It was someone else's area, actually. Mm -hmm. it was, exactly. It's just molding it. Someone, so someone, I, someone, I don't remember who, had pitched something in the area of... of um, drunkenness. Drunkenness. And something. this is, it's, this is it's just, and then out of that, it's just somebody it's comes just up with else the right way to spin it. But I'll, yeah, when you finally and you put it in, and they love it, and the audience goes crazy, and you get applause on a joke. That's not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. <laughs> That's a wrap. After 52 takes of 14 scenes and seven rewrites, 
the more than five miles of exposed film is rushed to the lab, where it will be developed overnight. The 122nd episode of Friends is officially in the can. Let's go, guys. You got 23 more episodes to shoot. What are you waiting for? <laughs> The next key step in the making of Friends takes place in Steve Prime's editing room. This is a difference of opinion. <laughs> we run about 30,000 feet of film for all four cameras, which is about 12 hours of footage for one half hour show. We then sync it up so that all four cameras will be played back on my machine simultaneously. And starting on Monday morning, I start cutting the show together. The hard part of editing is, is this, where you have problems, and that's, those are the ones where you do the most work. And when that happens in a marriage... No, Ross, come on, this is not... This is not There's, of course, many different ways I could bring her up. <laughs> I could easily change it to this shot. Ross, come on, this is not, this is not a marriage. Which I shied away from because she exited frame. Uh, the impactful way is to be close. Television is a close-up medium, so uh, I could go right from there, and then punch in for a close-up. So this is another option I could do. Happens in a marriage. No, Ross, come on, this is, not, this is not a marriage. This is the world's worst hangover. <laughs> Very fine way of cutting it. I opted to just play it all in close-up. Happens in a marriage. No, Ross, come on, this is, not, this is not a marriage. This is the world's worst hangover. <laughs> Sometimes the audience responds too big. If I went with the actual laugh... <laughs> so that laugh is still going through her next line into his next reaction. And that's it's five, six seconds. And in TV land, that's an eternity. Sometimes we have to put in a laughter that is shorter. Sometimes we do it to get it over with quicker. After three days of editing, Kevin Bright and Marta Kaufman screened the first rough cut. I don't love that joke. I feel like it's cheap. This doesn't mean anything, does it? No. Okay. Is it funnier to go to that wider shot sooner? I thought it was funnier as a reveal, um, but Try it. <laughs> Do we have one where when she screams, when she sees Joey, she stays freaked? Look, see, she seems to calm down after she screams. She And then she calms. Or get out of it faster or something. Kevin now joins Steve to work on the changes. String the jokes together. When he's not on the stage floor directing an episode, Kevin can always be found in the edit room where he sees every show through this painstaking phase of post-production. Okay, let's try this. Cutting off of this shot in the same place that you did, let's try him again. Okay. And then try coming back to this screen and then end over here with him turning around. Okay. Here is how the scene was finally edited. After making the changes, the big challenge is getting the show down to exact length, 22 minutes. This show was three minutes and 40 seconds out. That's a lot. Okay, deep cut. Steve and I, in surgeon-like manner, cut out of the show. But it gets to a certain point that you're only left with the stuff that you really love, so how do you keep it all in? It's taken us a while. <laughs> After editing, the show gets passed on to a number of technical experts, where every frame of film and every second of audio is carefully examined and polished. Here, the husband and wife team of Mike and Casey Crabtree add sound effects in a process known as Foley. We're Foley artists, and Foley was uh, originated in the 1920s by a man named Jack Foley. Awesome guy. These are my shoes. Everybody has their favorite shoe collection. These are heels that make a very, 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 very sharp sound, and I use them for hooker heels. And I even have Spice Girl shoes. <laughs> They're hard to walk in. <laughs> 
I'm going to do a scene on Friends now with Phoebe. She's running, she's going to go from a cement surface to a carpet surface. You mirror what's on that screen. You get into character, you are that person. Okay, pretty good sync. I felt comfortable with that. Come on, Phoebe, hurry, 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 okay, hurry. Okay. The essential tools of the Foley artist, props. Every conceivable object to make sounds. Okay, Tom, take two. If we don't like it, we'll do it again and again and again until we like it. It's our final call. Okay, Tom, we're gonna do it one more time. You have to have real good sync. <laughs> Work for me. Let's listen yeah. to the sound. Foley is really messy. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Wendy, Jane, Marilyn. Marilyn. Hi, honey. Music editor Marilyn Davis has come to meet with associate producer Jamie O'Connor and co producer Wendy Noller. Oh. I do music editorial for television shows, specific niche sitcoms. They screen the show and determine where music is necessary. I think just normal transition is fine. I don't think we have to do anything. Just trail over. Yeah, mostly. trail over. And You're not going to put each like show is not scored. A bulk of music is given to the editors by the composer every year. About four or five new batches a year. Because that might work. And those are then in the parlance of the industry tracked. Just the main title, and Okey I think dokey. we're done. We're done. Not too bad. Fabulous. That's not too much stuff in here. Thank you. <laughs> the next day, in a storefront studio, a few miles from the Warner Brothers lot, Marilyn goes over several versions of composer Michael Squaff's music for the opening of scene one. What? That's a great cue. Can you shorten it yeah. a little to get the piano? I'd like Move the piano, the piano to happen while. Right while she's still asleep. I can take out half that second phrase. Whatever. Here we make sure that the music fits both the mood, the situation, and fits physically, which is really what music editing is. I mean, editing is cutting to make fit. It is really amazing how long it takes us to do a show with 20 cues, three seconds each. Oh, that's great. That's already cut down. All right, well, that does act up, yes. And sitcoms just, I mean, it's like boom, 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 boom every week. And everybody is doing their job, and it all comes together at the mix. At the mix, all the different sound elements, dialogue, laughs, effects, foley, and music, are combined by engineers Charlie McDaniel and Kathy Oldham. Um. <laughs> their job is to set the proper levels for each track and filter out unwanted noise and hiss. Okay, there's one I missed. It's a frequency that comes in on this edit, so it could have been a different shot. Put some filters in here, I'll try and knock some of this stuff out. And Kathy and I usually play guess that frequency, and she's usually right. Uh, which elevator ding do you want to use? We have two here. Supposed to get married, there would be a clear-cut sign. That one? Okay. Get married, there would be a clear-cut sign. Um, I actually think two is better. I think one sounds like a hospital. We were supposed to get married, there would be a clear-cut sign. <laughs> we have four hours or five hours to complete a half-hour sitcom. So we're kind of known as the triage of mixing in, in the half-hour sitcoms. I don't get to do my full 45-second dance. We're doing 35 now, you guys, from now really on. Bummed. I'll be there for you when the rain starts to fall. It's hilarious. We love the, the characters. And They're all just perfect. And there's always like three different little um, dialogues going on at the same time, and so it keeps you interested. I'll be there for you 
With the rain stars. <laughs> it's got a great wit when you have so many shows on TV now that are just full of junk and, and, and are just stupid and come along and go. Friends has stayed over the past five years and it's, it's been a great show. I'll be there for you. It reminds us of the way we act. Because <laughs> you're there for me too. Do, 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 do. I laugh every day. My life is going to be longer because of friends. I feel insanely lucky. It's a staff that loves all these characters. When I was homesick from school, I watched The Odd Couple. When my kids or my grandkids are homesick from school, they're going to watch Friends. That is the coolest thing in the world to me. It is one of the most fun jobs I think you can get paid for. It's a rare situation where you go to work on a daily basis and actually look forward to seeing each and every person that works on your show. To get something that is so creatively satisfying and such a wonderful relationship with a group of actors. Good show, Matt. All of it came together and the, the stars were all aligned and everything worked out right and I don't think it gets better than this experience has been.